All right. I'd like, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, Assistant Secretary, will you lead us in the pledge? Uh, Assistant Secretary, please call the roll. Here. Ruth Griffey. Here. Here. Corey Tressel. Here. Michael Wool. Here. So, oh. um, just read them all off. Brian Bewer. Bewer. John Defoe. Jennifer Ely. Mark Fleming. Shane Hotchkiss. Here. Wade Hunt, Matthew Jenkins, Shannon Myers. Here. Justin Pert. Here. Here. Okay. Ethan Sense. Jennifer Shelley. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, moving on to public comment. We have none. Uh, scheduled delegations, we have none. Um, moving on to financial reports. Yeah. Actually, we need to approve the minutes so we don't consent agenda. Uh, I need a motion to uh, approve the minutes from the June 13th and 14th meetings. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to bills payable, general fund part A. Okay, um, so- Motion to approve. Justin, remember they have to make a motion a second before we can discuss. I have the motion. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? Yes, yes, I would um, just like the, um, with this being the July meeting, you're gonna notice that each of the funds that we're gonna approve have two sets of bills. The first being from June 15th to June 30th, which closes out our 21-22 fiscal year. And then from July 1 through June, July 26th, which is the period from the new fiscal year till today. Um, so uh, what you will notice, like I said, you'll have two, two sets um, that's standard for this time of year uh, for this July meeting. Um, the revenue is very standard um, for the first set of the um, general fund um, and as well as the expenses uh, for the first set from June 15th uh to the 30th uh we have some bills that we were wrapping up uh the end of the fiscal year um and then for july um what you will notice is you'll see some larger um expenses and they're related to the startup of the year as well as um some of the uh utilities and things of that nature so i know um there might be some surprises, not surprises, but different looks of uh, expenses uh, due to starting the year up and um, a lot of the software uh, that comes in for the 
full fiscal year. Uh, we pay that uh, in July with a renewal. Um, so if anyone has any specific questions related to any revenue or expenses in the general fund, please let me know. Any further discussion? Okay, this is a roll call vote. All those members will be voted as recording um, in favor of the motion. Let's say here in Arab Stain. Motion carries. General Fund Part B. Motion Second. to approve. I have a motion a second. Any further discussion? Mary, I'm gonna need you to call the roll on this. So put the item at the top column of where you're gonna tick off people's votes. Yep. Jen Goldhan? Yes. Ruth Griffey? Yes. Mary Kemper? I can still vote. Yes. <laughs> Douglas Knight? Abstain. Travis Mathna? Matthew Nelson? Yes. Corey Tursell? Yes. Michael Wool? Yes. And yes, one of motion carries. Item two, cafeteria fund. Motion to approve. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay or abstain. Motion carries. Capital Reserve Fund. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded as voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay or abstain. Motion carries. Construction Fund. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded as voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay or abstain. Motion carries. Item B, general fund. This is just for the report. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Cafeteria fund. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item D, Capital Reserve Fund. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Construction Fund. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? It was, Mary. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Scholarship fund. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item G, activity fund. Move to approve. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Uh, this next item is actually the wrong place in the agenda. Uh, we didn't recover this before any of our votes. Uh, correspondence we'll be addressing later on in the agenda. Reports and related actions, we have none. Old business, we have none. Uh, new business, moving on to personnel item one. We have some resignations. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item two, uh, termination of a, a custodian. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded as voting in favor of the motion. Unless I hear a nay abstain. Motion carries. Item three. Motion to approve three A through E. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? That's actually, uh, uh, Mike, that's actually A through F. On our, my doc, it says A through E. E and the F are switched. It's C to E. Oh, I see what you're saying. E and F are out of order. <laughs> okay. Correct. Did you say A through F? Yes. Motion to approve three A through F. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Thank you, Corey. This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay abstain. Item four, extracurricular, extracurricular contracts. Move to approve for A and B. Second. I have a motion a second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded voting in favor of the motion unless I hear an A or stay. Motion carries. Item five, substitute nurses and support staff. Move to approve. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay or abstain. Item six. Motion to approve item six A through G. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Doug. This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will rec record as voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay or abstain. Motion carries. Item seven. Move to approve seven A through O. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded as voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay or abstain. Item eight, summer experiences, literacy camp nurse. Move to approve. Second. No, hold on. I have a motion second. Further discussion. Yes. 
So you'll need to call the roll. <laughs> Jen Goldhan. Yes. Ruth Griffey. Yes. Mary Kemper Epstein. Douglas Knight. Yes. Travis Mathna. Yes. Matthew Nelson. Yes. Corey Tursell. Yes. Michael Wool. Yes. Motion carries. Number nine, volunteer coaches. Motion to approve nine A through D. Second. I have a motion a second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance will be recorded voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay or abstain. Motion carries. Item B, security services contract. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion a second. Any further discussion? I just have a quick question. Sure. Um, I was looking at the pay rate. Is that the same as... Is they basically everything the same except for just the rolling over the dates in the contract? Um, the increase, um, because it's a two year contract. So 2020, 2021 was the year that it was renewed. Now it's 22, 23. It was $25 and now it's 27. Uh, given the environment that we're in, that's a very reasonable increase if anything it's very much on the cheap side uh ex as far as expense is concerned um so but the previous contract was 25 dollars an hour this one for two years is 27 everything else in the contract is exactly the same thank you yeah the further discussion This is a roll call vote. All those members in attendance, we have recorded voting in favor of the motion unless I hear a nay or abstain. Motion carries. Item C, a foreign exchange student. Motion to approve C. Second. second. I have a motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. FFA overnight trip. Motion, motion to, to approve, approve D. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next item on the agenda is. Uh, Authorization to approve an intent to award contracts for the middle school demolition and, and new field house. I thought we were changing that name to locker rooms. Uh, <laughs> so we need a motion and a second, and then we can talk about it, and then we vote it up or down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? So to even discuss it, we have to have a motion and a second. Motion to discuss. Second. Okay. So tell us more. Okay. <laughs> um, so Justin, Anthony, which um, do you want to go first? I have the attachments. Anthony, do you want to start with this? Um, before we get into it, I just want to ask for clarification. We are discussing all of option A, correct? So items one, two, and three are not mix and match. Meaning if we go with, if we approve one, do we have to approve two and three? Or what's the, you can explain that as part of our conversation. So why don't we have Anthony, do you wanna start uh, yeah. with which 
Do you want to start with this or do you want to start with the value engineering? With the value engineering. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody that's on the Zoom can hear me okay. I have a quick question. Yep. With is there do we have to decide on this tonight or can we table this for the upcoming school board meeting so we can have a little bit more of time to discuss things at a caucus rather than discuss and decide tonight? If we could table this to the next meeting where well, more of us are in person. Well, I would say let, let's go through the discussion. That is always an option. Well, the, the issue is for this particular that we shared back in June, the bids are only good for 60 days. And so, so we were running, running up against, against the time frame. So if we were to retable this, we would have to rebid everything. Is that what I'm hearing? Anthony? Yeah, we, um, depending on when the bid date was and then the next board meeting, we would potentially have to um, rebid the project. August 7th and 8th are our next caucus and regular meetings. The, 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 actually, the, the August 8th and 9th, and the bids came in on June 9th. That's so it would close. actually be 61 days. Yeah. And we talked about that in June, if you remember. Right. We, we talked about, and so what you'll hear is, is what you'll hear tell you is all of the, what, the where we left it was the bids are the bids. What we said we wanted to do is go back get the value engineering, see what things that we can do. Remember, we had talked about some ideas as far as paving and all of those type of things. Um, so we'll be able to give you an update on things that just made sense, didn't make sense. Um, Justin, then we'll give you an update on finances because again, as months have gone by, we're able to fine tune what's left in the construction fund that impacts this. And so our plan is to give you all of that so that you can either vote up or down just because of the timeline, the way everything is. It was... We're, we're just up against that timeline with the bids. So I'll, I'll de defer sure. to you here, Anthony. Yeah. So the last we left it was we were going to have our consultants um, and the district talk to the contractors, to the low bid, to the apparent low bid contractors to come up with some value engineering ideas. So the majority of this work is site related. So most of the value engineering credits would come through site. Uh, the locker room structure is a very bare bones um, construction, and there was not a lot of ideas to um, for any types of credits or to strip anything back. You'll see most of the I most of the credits are coming from general construction. We talked to the mechanical and the plumbing contractor. And again, this was, it was pretty cut and dry. And we also talked with the electrical contractor. They did have some ideas. So we'll start first with, um, with the general construction. And if Shane, if you could go down to the next page, what we did was we looked at different scenarios to scale back the paving for the new parking lot. And anything that you uh, scale back now in the, in the land development um, requirements, at some point you're gonna have to do it later on within five years. So you'll, you're just kicking the can down the road. So some of the scenarios that we looked at, you'll see that there's three sections of paving. The two that are on the left, is new parking lot. Uh, the one that's shaded in green, that's where the ADA parking is located. And then the one all the way onto the right, on page right, that's existing parking. So this includes um, not only the ADA parking, the striping, curbing, and sidewalk. The first idea, and the, the largest credit that the contractor could give back was to only do a partial um, paving in the gray area. But what you're going to be left with was pretty much like a gravel area that you would not be able to use parking for. If you were to use it as parking, um, it's going to cause a lot of rework down the road before you do the finished paving. The other thing that we looked at, which we don't have a price for, uh, was to provide a, uh, a geofabric underneath the stone to help from that, that gravel or that stone 
settling even further, but that material is extremely expensive that you wouldn't be getting that full $150,000 credit. So we did not think that that was, and this, this was in discussions with the district. We didn't think that that was wise. Um, we also looked at, you'll see option 2A and 2B and number three. This was like an either or. And this was, um, this was in regards to uh, the green area. Um, and again, it was going to be taking, scaling this back to where you almost couldn't use it. Uh, and again, you're going to have to, at some point, do this work down the road. Um, I'm sorry, that was the green area was, num was number four. Um, and then number three was to eliminate uh, the curbing. And we can't eliminate all of the curbing because the curbing is detrimental to stormwater runoff. So when the rain collects on the paving, that curbing allows the stormwater to run to the stormwater inlet drains, and it's not running off into the grass. So a lot of the curbing is detrimental to the stormwater management and as a requirement of your land development plan with the municipality. So the credit that they were providing, um, which was reviewed by the civil engineer, um, is some curbing that is, it's not necessary for the runoff, but it only equates to about $5,000. Items five and six, these were building related. Um, item five is to change the block building, which is, it's called a textured masonry. Uh, so there's typically with concrete masonry block <clears throat> for an exterior application, <clears throat> it comes in three grades. There is a ground face, which is a smooth, which has a smooth finish. Then there's a split face, which is more of a jagged finish. The textured masonry, which was the basis of design, is that middle grade. So this credit for number five was to go to that lower grade where it's more, it's not, um, it's more of a jagged finish than somewhat of a rough finish. And we feel that overall, that's really not going to impact the aesthetic that much. We feel that this is a, that's a good application. We've detailed plenty of buildings with a split face, um, even on some of the schools, not just a, a structure like this. And then item six was just more of a detailing um, change that the contractor suggested on the gabled ends of the building. We provided a little bit of an overhang above where the block is um, on the gabled ends, which is the triangle pieces um, uh, uh, where the roof line is. It's a metal siding. And what we did was we pulled it a little bit further away from the block just to kind of create a drip edge condition for when water is running down the face of that from the rain. And this is just a small credit to, to move that back so it's somewhat flush. And we feel that those two items, five and six, those would be decent credits to take. As I mentioned, uh, mechanical and plumbing, there were no credits that were offered. Uh, for the electrical, uh, we were recommending that you would take all of these credits, which equal to about $105,000. Item number one was deleting the fire alarm system. So the fire alarm system is not required by code. And what we included was um, smoke detectors. It's a pretty small. It's a pretty small building. It's very open, uh, so they are offering a credit of about forty-three thousand uh, dollars to eliminate that. Items two and three, uh, they're dealing with the cabling. Uh, item two, in particular, with the telephone cabling. Reviewing this with the district and our electrical engineer, they thought two and three would be good credits to take, and then item four was with the overall lighting package. There's a pretty substantial amount, fifty-six thousand uh, dollars, just to change, um, just to change some of the manufacturers' um, 
uh, for that lighting package. And um, this was for a, a, just more of a material savings. And we thought that that would be wise to take. So um, from the discussions that we had with the administration, you'll see that that yes column were credits that they would recommend that you would take. Uh, the items in the no column were the ones that, you know, we thank you for putting that credit together. Mm -hmm. However, we don't want, we don't want to accept this. This would all work. Uh, I can't state this uh, enough times. Everything for that general construction, at some point, you're going to have to do that work. You, you go ahead and you take the credit now. You're just kicking the can somewhere down the road that you're going to have to do this work and who knows what the cost will be for paving at that time. Um, so that total credit amount came to $110,000. If you were to approve the project and move forward, uh, these would be done as change orders, as credit change orders back to the district. Any any discussions on the um, value engineering items? I'd just like to say thank you for taking the time and trying to figure this out. I'm sure mm -hmm. it took some time. I appreciate yep. it. You're welcome. Thank you. So if I did my math right, we're looking, if we take the recommended value ch uh, engineering changes, we'd be down to about 2.946. Um, if you go to, so this is a, a summary of the, of the bids. We'll, you'll see that there was a, a rough construction estimate of $2.7 million. Bid results were about 3.9. And you'll see all the prime contractors and the low bidders, uh, ECI construction, mid-state mechanical, fry lots, and uh, WL buyers. So that would, we would recommend that you would not accept any of the alternates uh, for the project due to budget concerns. Um, if you want to discuss any of these alternates, we could. Um, but on the next page, this is a comparison of the, of the estimate to the bids plus the credit amount. So you'll see that you know, that final estimate around 2.9 the bids came in at 3.9 with the $110,000 credit. You're at about 3.8 for the construction um, portion of the project. And then we included the soft costs for um, you know, making sure you set aside a contingency and any testing and inspection that's going to be needed for the project, um, which we'll have to hire the testing agencies. Um, your uh, your fees through the municipality, which are pretty pretty low, and then your design professional fees. Um, you'll see that with that total um, of the soft cost plus the construction cost, you're at about four million dollars total, and the original budget was approximately three point two, so you're eight hundred eighty thousand. Uh, above what the original budget was. So just to point out in this particular case for the construction contingency, this is just a percentage that they calculate. We have almost everything we need for this space. Like we saved um, benches, we've saved those things. So you're not looking at furniture like we did with the old building. That's purely a number that they just put in place. And Justin can certainly add, but we feel very confident that we're not going to get close to that number from our end. Now, we also know with construction, something pops up. I'm hoping there's nothing buried underneath an old middle school that is going to surprise people, but we're, we're not anticipating any mm. of those things. But I want you to understand that number is just a percent based on the, the total. So I don't know if you have anything else to add there, Justin. I would agree with you. I mean, there's I I think the soft cost, hopefully I don't want to jinx this, but that soft cost number is high. Um, I don't want to spend anywhere near $119,000 in contingency. Uh, we were pretty good, uh, and I will say lucky at this point with the new middle school project of not coming anywhere near the dollar amount that was budgeted in that contingency fund. 
Um, so I'm very hopeful and I see no reason why, unless like Dr. Hotch just, just mentioned, uh, something's buried under the middle school that that wouldn't be the same case there. So I agree. that would be, that would be the, the biggest risk is unforeseen conditions with, with uh, potential rock that you would encounter. So why don't we switch? Um, so I had a question for Anthony. Yep. Sorry. Can we go back to the picture of the diagram with the multicolored parking lots on it? So Anthony, one of the times you explained this project to us, like the value add, you were just saying that some of these were just going to be the base and stone. But if we reject those value adds, then the green and the gray will be paved parking. The idea is the existing parking lot all the way there on the right. And then we have the, I, I don't know if there's whatever little grass is between it, but then essentially then it's all parking lot. That was one of our original plans. The middle school will now be replaced by a real parking lot with real asphalt, just like every other parking lot that we typically park on. Kirby, sidewalk, parking islands, ADA accessibility. Okay. Uh, yeah, just before, yeah, that's fine. So It'll be a real parking lot. Just like every other parking lot we ever park in any other time. So I mean, maybe we need to re kind of reframe what this project really is. How much of this budget is going towards parking versus the actual building? Because, you know, I think that's the part a lot of people are, they're going to see a $4 million uh, number coming down for a, a block building. And I'm thinking I could buy a really nice house with that kind of money. Right. And I, but I can't, I can't, you know, I don't know how many parking spaces there. I have a parking lot. You know what I mean? So how much of this is parking cost-wise versus just the building? question what the middle school is still standing why can't we use the existing locker rooms now is it that they're stripped completely and that's why we're using the auxiliary gym or is there any way that we can use what we currently have to help i mean four million dollars the remaining in the construction fund is 3.5 million so we're over by five hundred thousand dollars so twofold, we're going to, we're going to talk to you about how we can fund it. But two, do you remember the building um, you can't occupy now? All utilities are gone, um, pretty much gutted in order to bring. And that was the first bit. If we go way, way back was to bring that up that we can occupy it. And the, that, that uh, bid was astronomical. That's why we had to go back out to bid because we actually wanted to save walls. We wanted to save things. And again, we were, floor that it costs more to actually keep what we have and bring it up to speed to be usable than it is to actually do this. But good question. I'm glad we got a chance to go back because it was so long ago. It was back in March when that happened. Um, so this is like bare, bare minimum. And I think in a minute, you'll hear from Justin as far as how much money we actually have left in the construction fund. It is more than what we originally had anticipated for the budget that all plays into um, how to pay for the project. So if you guys are ready for that, we'll give him the green light to talk about that. Listen, if I could have looked in the crystal ball, because we started that process in, you know, you know. Yeah, listen, listen, I, I've had the same, but we started that process in January and none of this, nobody would have predicted where you are. But yeah, if we had do-overs, there, there's, you know, this whole, even go back, we went out to bid for the new middle school right at the beginning of a pandemic. 
And so this whole thing along the way has been hit with some really interesting global crisis, to be quite honest with you. So the, the demolition of the existing middle school was planned at the same time of the design of the new middle school. So all the development, the land development plans that we reviewed with the township that showed the construction of the new middle school also included the demolition of the old of the old middle school, um, or at least a, a partial demolition of it. All right, Justin, I'll go and just you you walk me through your slides here. Okay. Um, so. As you can see with the title, um, I'm going to wrap in uh, update on the state budget since it finally got finalized and Harrisburg decided to uh, do something, um, which actually ended up being very good news uh, for us. Uh, that was totally unexpected. Um, that that, and then I'm also going to wrap that into funding for the project that we're discussing now. So. Um, as you can see on that first slide, um, the final state budget numbers as, as they are um, was an increase uh, from what the final budget that you, the board, had approved of $624,513. And the breakdown between the basic ed subsidy and the special ed is there. The other piece, um, of the money that is new is uh, grant, mo grant money, uh, specifically to those two areas, physical safety grant and mental health grant of 128,951. Um, they still haven't released the final allowable uses for that, but none of that money definitely could not go towards anything related to this project whatsoever. So. Uh, that the total grant money is $257,902. Um, so again, uh, if you recall what the board approved the final 22-23 budget, we were using $2,389,709 uh, of the fund balance. And that's what you have approved for the 22-23 uh, budget. Um, Factoring in the increase in state subsidy that we received, the revised final budget um, with just those numbers straight up is $1,765,196. Um, so I always provide this information um, on the next slide uh, for the three year budget projections. Um, and this is uh, with the finalized state budget figures. Um, as you can see, uh, the expenditure numbers have not changed from what you last saw in June, just the revenue increased by the increase in the state funding um, and the deficits uh, for 23, 24, 24, 25, and 25, 26 have come down uh, as a result of that. And you can see now um, 23, 24, we're definitely good. Um, 24, 25 is where we get into the situation of uh, some further discussions gonna be needed uh, and 25, 26 as well. Now, again, let me emphasize, this is with information on figures that I have now. Um, there's a lot of things that could change. Uh, we all know the political environment is very uh, fluid. I'll just say that. Um, it could be positive. It could be negative uh, as it affects public education. But this is, this is using information that is solid um, right now, uh, as, as we know. Um, so looking at um, the old middle school project, this is basically what you just saw uh, from Anthony. I just put that in there. That's the same slide. Um, so moving on to funding options for this old middle school project. Um, what Dr. Hotchkiss was mentioning earlier, uh, initially we were anticipating $3.2 million remaining in the uh, construction fund. And after further analysis and further time going by and realizing where we're at and what we have available, um, 
that is that solid figure of three million five hundred thousand is a good solid number that we're going to have remaining in the construction fund for this project of the demolition and the new locker room. Um, the other piece that we can't forget is we had the middle school auction uh, and that revenue was determined to go back into that building. Um, and that amount of money that was deposited into the cap reserve fund was $117,500. So um, what my recommendation would be is to utilize to get to the difference between the 3.5 million and the potential of the highest being just over four. But like we said earlier, we believe that number is going to be down uh, based on the soft cost, uh, but time will tell on that. We can't be con we can't be 100% confident, but based on the information that we have and the pr uh, process we went through with the new middle school, we feel confident we can get that number down uh, below where the budget shows. Uh, so utilizing $200,000 of the cap reserve fund and then the remaining coming out of the general fund since the $624,000 was unexpected uh, for the 22-23 budget. Um, so that was the option uh, for funding this project. Um, and at that point, I'll open it up for any further discussions or questions that anybody might have. I'm going to ask a really dumb question because I'm not a construction guy. Is there any reason we can't use the slab as part from part of the footprint of the existing middle school? Because there's no foundation, right? No, of the old middle school. Is there any reason you for the yeah to use the, use that slab for the for the for the basis of the new building? aren't very many utilities in there, right? I mean, couldn't we run that up the outside or, or if you will, the, you know what I mean? I, I'm just, I'm trying, I'm spitballing here, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. so a lot of the utilities are running underground. What a bring them inside the building. So they'll have to drench whatever portion of the slab is remaining. And that's Yeah. Okay. All right. I just thought I'd throw that out there. You know, all the, you think like all the drains or showers. And then, um, all right. Okay. He convinced me. So that. So that's an interesting idea to keep the existing slab. You know, do it in front of it. Make sure y'all. So for looking at utilizing 200,000 from the capital reserve fund and it says the remaining out of the general fund what's the general amount that you're looking at to pull out of the general fund what's the difference then well that all depends on what the final cost is so um, okay. I would never recommend uh, draining down the capital reserve fund to zero uh, or using the full capital reserve fund that is our emergency fund for unexpected maintenance issues that come up that we deal with on a continual basis. Um, and, you know, I don't, we don't have money to be putting in that capital reserve fund. So I'm very cautious of wanting to utilize anything in excess for that. So, I mean, the hope is obviously, um, I mean, if you're basing it off the budget, the budget was 4 million. Uh, so we have three and a half million in construction fund it would be uh, remaining, it would be 300,000 out of the general fund if it's budget. But like we've been saying all along tonight, we feel that that number is the extreme high and we're very confident. Um, obviously we can't be certain until the project's over and, and we don't know what is uh, any of the unforeseen circumstances, but the most it would be, would be 
300,000, but right. obviously we'd be thinking under that. So spitballing that even if you, the soft target area here, the 119, let's say you don't spend all that, but you're probably looking at the minimum, like another 200,000, you got to pull out of it. Out of the general fund, yes. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's where I believe Justin made the recommendation is to split the difference between the, the, the capital yeah. and the general fund. And, and again, I keep joking around that I will certainly ask the contractors as gas prices come down. I'd love to see a rebate on the uh, some of the, the fuel and the paving. Um, if they, you know, would be so kind to kick back some money if their estimates come down. I'll just put that out there publicly. I'm, I know it's a uh, spitball, but the reality is they were accounting for that. So one of the things that I want to point out was that the difference between the zero percent tax increase and the 4.7% tax increase was $626,000. And our state um, subsidy increase that we just got was 624,000. So thankfully we saved our taxpayers with the 0% tax increase and still got what we needed, which would have been at the 4.7 that would have been passed on to our, to our taxpayers. So thankfully they don't have to bear that burden and we still got what we needed. So I think based on that and considering the current inflation and everything like that, I think we should just not move forward with this right now. We are 586,000 plus over our 3.5 million. So I don't think that's a real good idea to go into the capital reserve fund because as Justin mentioned, it's for what happened if something happens and we're already planning on replacing other things with ESSER funds, but what if something else happens? I just don't think it's a good idea for us to move into anything outside of our remaining 3.5 million. And I could understand using the middle school auction revenue to contribute to that project. But outside of that, we're dipping in the money that we shouldn't be dipping into. I don't think plain and simply, we just don't have the money for it right now. I think maybe we should wait a little while or look at other options. And does anybody else have any idea for other options? I mean, this we can't afford this right now. Other options we've considered. I've looked at portable locker rooms, and you're looking at ten to twelve thousand dollars a month. Um, you know, they job construction trailers. We certainly looked at those. Um, we actually we had to spend money to save the auxiliary gym floor now because that's our temporary locker room. Um, so we, we spent roughly $12,000 to be able to ready that between carpet and padding and we're building some walls up. And so um, we're ready to, to kind of convert that. But I don't think that that's a long-term solution um, to be able to use that. You know, even, even the concern is uh, using, taking up what we're building temporary for the winter season, because if we take that, facility out of play for the winter season that will create some scheduling issues for uh, not only um, academically for the PE classes but also winter sports and practices and schedules and those type of things because we did we've had lots of those those types of conversations what the heck could cost ten twenty thousand dollars a month just to rent lockers you uh, I mean, well not lockers but the trailers with oh the trailer you know, bathroom you know they're, they're, I mean, they're, we have you know, a building. portable your portable rather, trailers to be able to house people not in the building we we look I'd rather at put it. fifty thousand back in the old middle school and fix up some locker yeah, rooms it, for two it, it, even if it's only for two years then <laughs> we 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 were astounded but that's that's what it is right I mean that's always on the table why why couldn't we spend I mean. 20, 30, maybe 50,000 put back in the old middle school for two, three years just to get some locker room so they can use it. Do you get, do you get your certificate of occupancy? I think it's going to cost you a lot more than that. Yeah, there's no, there, there's just no way that if you, again, go back to uh, the building, what was needed to kind of bring that up to speed, so to, so to say, it would, I can't even give you an estimate of what that would yeah. cost to bring it back. Electrical and stuff wasn't up to code, right? Right. Oh, it's correct. So and this even, fall and even the, and, and sorry, uh, even the foundation um, because of how it was built, part of the first bid that we got back in March, they had to come in and reinforce the foundation, correct? Because of the construction. Don't you remember that around the gymnasium area, Anthony? Yeah. Because it was, they had to build something around it because it wasn't going to meet current specs to house yeah. something on top of it. So a portion of even. a portion of the portion of the building that was going to uh, remain that was going to be a new exterior wall 
did not have deep or thick enough foundations to be exposed to the elements and didn't have appropriate frost depth. Kind of a shame because that building is not as old as this place, <laughs> as the high school. Even if we had to spend $10,000 for next season, it's still not $586,000 over. So there's still a big chunk of change that's being saved there. No, I, I think that was 10,000. So this fall, where, where I, what locker rooms are they going to use? Because this can't be done by football season. Oh, so it, what are they going to use this year? That's what you're saying. We're using the auxiliary gym. We're converting it into temporary locker rooms in the high school. Okay. That's what we're using. So that's what's going to be used for this fall. Correct. And how long I, is this project going to take to be done? It would be ready for actually maybe late spring, but definitely by next fall to be able to use. And, and the locker rooms aren't as big of an issue for our spring sports. We've talked about that athletic and we don't use them a ton. Um, it still could be ready, but definitely, it definitely would be available for next fall. And we wouldn't have to do this again. I think Doug, were you trying to say something, Doug? Well, I was going to say, I, I think the gen say like spend $10,000, but I think that number you provided was $10,000 per month. Correct. So if you look at that, that number over the course of the season, right, or all of the seasons that we would need to cover, it's, you know, you're well over $100,000 just in temporary locker room rentals, which is pretty darn close to that, you know, 200000 that we were talking about for the general fund. I think we're kind of talking about two different things. I wasn't talking about the okay. monthly rentals. I was talking using what we have now, using the resources we have now, such as the aux auxiliary gym to use that for this season's football, as well as next season's football. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think, uh, Dr. Hotchase, you said it was like $10,000 or something like that. It, it, that was at home Depot right now. We had $12,000 for carpet, wood padding to, to create the temporary facility. We do that for this season. We do that for next season. That's maybe a total 20, maybe $25,000 compared to $586,000. That may be the way that we have to go to use that auxiliary gym for two seasons till the prices come down a little bit more and things are a little more reasonable. And, you know, I am very thankful, Anthony, for all the work that you and Justin, and I'm sure Dr. Hotchkiss, you put into this too, but I just don't think it's the right time. We're too far out of budget. It's not like we're $10,000 over budget. We're $586,000 over the $3.5 million that's left in the reserve, uh, the uh, construction fund. I, mean, I want to be I want to be all in favor of it, but I can just see the outcry in the public right now when they see that we're spending $500,000 you know, beyond what the construction budget is. Revamp of the auxiliary gym is ready, will be ready for this football season? That's the goal. So they wanted to start working on it today. The uh, padding is back ordered. It was supposed to be here yesterday and it's not. We have everything else that we're anticipating. They're, we're ready to, to get moving with it as soon as that padding comes in. And obviously, that's the most important thing we need to put down first. And that's the last thing we're going to be getting. Get down. It, we, it stays exactly like it is right now? Yes. Well, I think the thing is, we're, eventually, it's going to get knocked down. It's just, are you know, we doing it now or are we going to wait until... Well, it's yeah. no different than if you look at Northern's. Northern's old school is still there and they use it just to hand out uniforms and some accessory classrooms and things like that. I don't think you need, well, obviously, just for storage, though. But they do have a CEO for parts of the building they're allowed to have people in there because you have to have a CEO to, to have yeah. people in it, right? Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. We're, we're legal to use ours for storage right now, right? Just can't have people, kids in there. Yeah, we don't we don't have any storage in there at all. Right yeah, now. We, but we could use it for that that legally technically. We could we, we have, have no utilities. There's no lights. Yeah. anything like yeah, that. Daytime only, like story said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would it look like if we did just tear down the building? We just tear down the building, <laughs> turn it into a parking lot, hold off on the locker rooms, and just use the auxiliary gym until things kind of settle out with prices and we can afford what we're looking at here with building this locker room. Well, I think the big escalate cost escalation those in the materials for the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, we're not. Well, if you tore the old one down, you could just, you wouldn't have to pave it right away. Like my correct, you could just like, you know, 
great, you know, landscape it over. Put, no, you know, I think we might have yeah, to. So right? he, part of the, it's got to it's align with whatever our stormwater management plan is. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that's something I, I would defer to, to Anthony on. Yeah. Uh, I also have a yeah, question. You would, about... no, no, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I, I, I agree, right? Because I think Anthony already said that, you know, that was really part and partial in the, the land development plan that's already been approved, right? Or presented to the, to the municipality. So you know, that, that would possibly be a hurdle in that approach. Um, but I also have some questions about the bond issue itself, right? And I, I think there is, you know, maybe I don't want to say like an exact hard date that we have to have that that fund those funds dealt with, right? But there is, you know, I know it's un, looks unfavorable if you know you refund stuff out of that bond. Um, so what is there that portion of this to consider as well? Yeah, there, there's obviously a timeline that we need to spend it. I mean, typically um, it's three years, so we wouldn't be able to delay for two years to spend that money out. Um, I would have to see if there's any way to get, I, I'm not aware of there being any forgiveness on that, but obviously I've never done that and not aware of anyone that's done that. So the last thing we want to do is have to give any money back. Um, but uh, that would some, be something I'd have to get further clarification on if that would be a direction of the whole board. Well, yeah, and that, that was my concern, right? Because I know it, it had been talked about before, right? That if, if that was a discussion that would have to be have, there's, you know, credit ratings and things like that, that that would be considered, you know, on future borrowing with the district as a result of that action. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. Correct. So with that being said, oh sorry. <laughs> no, with with that being said, it almost in my mindset, I'm going back to what Jen said earlier about tabling our decision, final decision tonight on this to get some more information. Like what happens if we do decide we don't want to do it now and we want to wait two years, then we're gonna get penalized. You know, just kind of have all the facts on the table so that we can make a conscious decision to do the right thing because it is a lot of money that we're voting on here to spend. So well it's I my, that. So yeah, my piece. It's, <laughs> it's my understanding that we basically you can't really table it. You either vote for it or you reject all bids based on the timeline of the bids. So we can't wait till August to do it. The decision needs to be made today. We're out of time. Well again it it gets back down to the, the tabling it just means we're going to rebid it. All right. Which means we're rejecting these bids and we're going to rebid it. Uh, do we think? How do we think the contractors would re react to another rebid? Because this would be the second time we've rejected all bids, right? Didn't we reject them all the first time? Yes. Yes. How would they react? Um, I mean, would they rebid it again when we asked for it? You you do run the risk of losing contractor interest because on the rebid. We had some contractors that bid the first time that did not put bids in for the rebid for the second bid because they they lost interest in the project. Excuse the me, is producing bids is not cheap. It Excuse costs them me. money to prepare and produce these bids. So I, that's why I asked that question. If you were to rebid the project, you would almost have to wait next year in 2023 to move forward with it. Which is kind of where I would be at it anyways. I think that's what we need to do. We need to wait. Excuse me. We can't afford this right now. Hello. Yeah, hear you. Hear yeah. As a contractor, if, if I bid a project twice, I would walk away if you came back to me a third time. There is no way. Or I'd make sure that that bid was high enough that you sure as a hell weren't going to do it, period. That happens a lot, but even my old job, we used to bid things high. If we did, usually, we used to, my old job, we used to bid a lot of jobs for hack, and hack was always notorious to go with the lowest bid possible. 
no matter what you bid. So we just got to the point where we always bid high anyways, because we just didn't want to deal with them. <laughs> so Shane, there's already an impact on the students this fall because we won't have access to the auxiliary gym. So that changes the way that we're going to have to do PE classes or. Yes. And thankfully because of the fall, we're typically outside through the, the fall season. Now you get some bad weather. We certainly can use the gym, but the majority of the time, those classes are outside already. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Correct. Now, another note, we discussed, you know, other projects on, on the campus that need done um, that we were hoping maybe there'd be leftover construction funds to help. So other projects that come up, where, where are we going to pull funds for those projects? I'm not sure what um, projects you're talking about. Well, I, I, I know in general, there's been talk about putting together a proposal for all the lighting in the auditorium that needs replaced. That's just one off the top of my head. Uh, there's discussion yeah. that HVAC on the roof needs fixed. <laughs> well, I mean, we're having those discussions now. Okay. Um, but like I said, I can tell you for a fact, I know that we had to replace two one compressor over the high school cafeteria freezer and the band room is hopefully going to be able to re be replaced. But those two items are coming out of the cap reserve fund. So that's why the recommendation wasn't to drain that fund. Right. Okay. Um, but we are having discussions now about the potential of finding solutions and things of that nature uh, long term. Now, that's nothing in, in the near future. Uh, but we also have um, ESSER funding that we've already talked about, the exterior doors at the elementary, high school boiler replacement, and potential um, addressing envelope, high school envelope issues. So those are out of ESSER funding, which is one time and allowable expenses. So outside of that, obviously, our next focus is the high school because that's the piece that we haven't touched for some time. Um, ho hopefully we have no issues with the other two buildings because pretty much everything's been replaced or repaired in those two buildings. So the high school is going to be the one, but short term, there shouldn't be knock on wood, anything major. Thanks, Justin. Like, I just wanted to add something. My, uh, my initial reservations, when last time we talked with Anthony, I was concerned that we were moving forward with demolition, we were gonna end up with a stone parking lot. So that frustrated me because then I thought we were losing all benefits. <laughs> then we're still, still spending extra money and then you know, didn't get any of the renovations that we initially were gonna get for the middle school. And then we ended up with a stone parking lot. So I didn't like any of those options. At least tonight, I now finally understand or better understand that too, that at least we're still getting that parking lot. So then at least we're still moving some pull forward into something positive that now that we've at least alleviated a parking problem that we have at the stadium now then too, which is one of our initial concerns when we were trying to knock down the building. So now we can still at least improve that. And then we'll have a locker room then that won't impact our students, other education prospects in the high school then too. So it's still, there's still value there. And then concerns about how costs will increase. It seems to me that so far every time that we've done or my experience with this whole project from the beginning is our costs have always gone up and they're constantly going up. So my concern is that if we do wait, right now it's 500 grand, which is tough, but we do have the 500 grand right now to make the improvements. So we can sell them as improvements. We'll have a real parking lot, expand parking, and we'll reduce impact on our students. Because if we wait, there's a chance next year, maybe it'll be 400 or 500 grand, but maybe it could also be another million or continues to increase though, because everything that I've seen so far is, you know, we, we budgeted for, you know, 28 million, it comes in at 33 and then it changed to 32 or whatever, just the whole middle school project. And now this project we started at, I don't remember all the numbers. I'm, I'm really spitballing numbers, but the number was, you know, it has gradually always increased. So currently there is money. So even though I, would have preferred us to have the renovated middle school with all of the other options we had in there for offices and the daycare and everything else and expanded parking. At least with this project, then we still do get a real parking lot and then a lab and then a locker room then that won't impact the rest of our students. I have a question. Where would we have, where would we be if we didn't get the increase in the subsidy from the state? As, as far as, uh, I think maybe that's what we need to be thinking of instead of just spending the subsidy money. We need to think as if we don't have that subsidy money, 
and leave it alone because in 24, 25, we're 2 million to the negative. Yeah, I don't think we, I I think we need to be more careful with up, our money. I'm sorry. That we still end up with an old building that doesn't do us any good and we don't have that parking that we could have. So that's just negative on negative. And that we also then have a locker rooms then that are subpar, which isn't something I was necessarily against, but it still then will have impact on our students. So we can reduce impact on our students and still get a real parking lot that will be benefit to the district. If we don't do any of those things, we can save some money, but that money ultimately, um, who knows what will be there in the future and how much it will cost. So it seems that we've started down a path that we want to complete it as best we can. I think if we demo the old middle school and turn it into a parking lot, hold off on the locker rooms and keep it under 3.5, it's doable, but it has to stay under what's left in the construction fund. Because that construction fund money is already part of what we borrowed against the new middle school. So it's all encompassed in and it's not costing any taxpayer any extra money at all. So it already we can't go over that 3.5. That, that, that's a red line. Well, it actually would be if you, again, the goal was the auction. So it would actually be $3,617,500 because if you combine the construction money, then we put that money that we got from the old middle school back in that raises your budget to 300 or $3,617,500. That makes sense. That's workable, but that is, I didn't include that number in there, but at least that's going back to the middle school and it's not taking from the capital reserve fund or the general fund or any other fund that we can use. Anthony. For any other reason. Anthony, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe we can just demo the building without doing anything else since that's not the way the project was bid. Correct. You would have to rebid the project. You change the scope. So we can't just. Excuse me. We're excavating. Yeah. You have to you have to do something with the field or the grass that's left. The other challenge is you will never get the true value of what the demolition costs um, and the rest of the work that's being pulled out from the project. So you're now asking for credit to, um, to just demolish the building and don't do the locker room and don't do any of the paving, but provide seating instead. You'll never get the true value of all the paving and what it costs to build to build the building. No, I think there, I think the suggestion was we would basically demolish the building, but still do all the paving. Exactly. So we would be doing everything that's in this in the project so except saying, building the locker room. room. So you're saying take a credit on just doing the just doing the locker room facility. Exactly. We take down the old middle school, right. we pave it, turn it into a parking lot, hold off on building the new locker rooms mm -hmm. for now. That way we still use the most of the bond that we took out for the middle school, which right. the remaining balance is yeah. 3.5 plus what we raised. Mm -hmm. And we, it doesn't hurt our credit. We're, we're not sending any money back to the bank and we're not going over budget. Well, we'd only be using about, that's why I asked the question, the, the paving and the demolition was about 2 million. So you, oh, I know that. Yeah, but my point is, is that, you, that you still have 1.5 in the bond, right? So if you were to do that, it still would be the same. Where you, you, would, you would not get a credit back from the contractors for the true value of of what it costs to do to do the build, and you and you you would essentially have to reject the bids for the um, for the HVAC contractor. Electrical would still have some work because they have some site lighting. Plumbing would still have some work because you probably would want to do some of the underground plumbing utilities. So you put them in place when you decide to do. Uh, when you decide to build a building, but you'll never get the true value of it. Um, and I, I think what you're almost suggesting is is to is to phase it. That's essentially what it's doing. Whether it's in two, exactly what yeah, you suggest, whether it's in two phases or three phases, and 
But Anthony, doesn't that need to be? No, because you're, you're basically saying, let's do this part of the project now, and we'll come back and revisit the locker room. But right. You, but if, even if you push that down at a later date, and you phase, you go out and you know, you, you we put some type of package together that says, okay, phase one is going to include demo and park. Phase two is going to include the, the the locker room facility. The cost is still going to be the same. The cost could potentially be even more than what it is now. Experience in phase say, con my experience in phase construction projects is usually they cost more. Because and sometimes there is rework that's involved. And because you're because you're bidding it later, you know, a year from now, two years from now, the construction costs are going to go up. I don't I don't think costs are going to come down. I don't think they're going to grow as fast. But I don't think costs are, I mean, they won't grow as fast. Right. But they're but they're not going to come down. It's not going to get like, you know, it's not like gas. Right. Because when you look at a lot of the cost drivers, specifically in labor. That's going to be a that's going to be a big piece. Now, in 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 the in the putting the asphalt down, obviously that is highly dependent on the cost of petroleum. It, it's going to be outside the window we have for the bond, for sure. As good a luck we had when we did the bond for the middle school, where we, you know, we got the money for, you know, practically free because of the timing of when it was issued, which was the day, the day after the market crash from COVID. Where we're now we're on the we're on the fuzzy end of that lollipop, right? Where it's this this you know, you you I mean you you look at Littlestown. I shouldn't mention it, but you look at other districts that are are doing building projects. They, I mean, they're twice as much as what we what we spent on the middle school. Now, I mean, it may be a bigger space, but I don't think it's twice as big. So, well, yeah. So, Justin, you you were you trying to say something earlier? Yes, Anthony. I still go back to you're changing the scope of the project. So, to do a phase, don't you have to have that in your original scope? So, right now, we couldn't do that anyway. Is that correct? Anthony, Anthony's saying yes. Yes. Sorry. Okay, so. Shane, the locker rooms then the auxiliary gym. So you have to tear them down in, over the winter and then put, maybe put them back in the spring, you were saying? Well, that, that, that was actually our conversation was let's wait to see what happens tonight because that'll dictate that but we we don't the plan wasn't to put them up in the spring so we would have no locker room facility for the spring sports we'd have to just make an adjustment if if it were to be long term we would try to put things back up for the fall because once you do that in the spring a lot of spring sports and inclement weather use that gym and so that would be it it would be very very difficult to be able to keep that up. And, and basically if you kept up the whole time, you'd lose, we'd lose academic space through the whole winter time and into the spring. So the lesser of two evils was to take it down. If, and if we need to build it again, to build it again. Something that we do. So it, yeah, right now our, our maintenance department is, and they were, I was down today and we were doing a couple of things that we could do, but they're eagerly. And so it's going to take their man hours. They're anticipating at least a week. And again, we're at the mercy of padding of all things. What and again, our, our, and I, I want to reiterate, one of the things we are, we don't want to do is ruin that floor. That's a rubber floor. And so we decided to purchase padding to cover the entire floor and then carpet and a, a, a minor, you know, thin fabric to go over that, to protect that floor with, people and kids and wood and all those things on there. And so, you know, that is a risk of, of 
the last thing we want to have happen is oh, this sounds great. And all of a sudden the floor is damaged and now we've got to fix that. So it, it does make us nervous, but we think we've done everything we've can. And I'll, and I'll give a chance to Dave Warburg has done a lot of work with that going to home Depot and talking with people and talking with manufacturers to really kind of get a game plan from the product perspective. Um, what I guess two parts the football players and stuff would be wearing cleats. So that's one of the things that would damage the floor and what other sports are, would use this locker room besides football. Keep in mind, it would be anybody that uses the stadium. So we'd have to store some equipment in there, but we also, um, Team soccer comes in, use the stadium. Field hockey wants to use yeah, the stadium. At least, unless it's changed since my kids played soccer, they don't use the locker rooms. And, 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 and again, again, we don't want to be presumptuous, but we need to be prepared. If somebody wants to use a locker room, we have to provide a locker room if we have a, an opposing team coming in that wants to do that. The other thing that's impacted right now um, also is, is just um, parking for people coming to the stadium, buses and bands. Like we're coming up with alternative solutions because we don't want them to be near that building like we're trying to come and we're actually planning through the construction what that would look like um where to where to kind of phase that that parking that's all been but again we're we were waiting to see what happened tonight and whether it's you know plan one or plan d <laughs> of, of what to do and again I, and i just want to take the opportunity as well um uh, Jason Ehlers uh, maintenance has done a great job kind of planning for that. Um, you've got um, all of our, our maintenance guys are really, they're, they're the ones that are getting things positioned to be able to install that in the midst of doing all the preventative maintenance through the course of the summertime. So um, we're anxious to get started. Any other discussion? Okay, so, this is a roll call vote. please? What are we voting on, first of all? Option A? One, two, one. and three, correct? Two and three, all three? No, 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 right now the motion was made for option one, or option A, number one. And so that's, that's the motion, that's been the conversation. If that passes, then you consider the two change order recommendations that we made. You'd have to vote on those separate. Okay, does that make sense? The, the, no, it is. this this is not, no, it's it's the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yep. So right now you would just go um, well, roll call could, for we, option A. Yeah, we we could roll them up all into one. You could absolutely. It, it, well, actually, know, you I can't. Think, actually, I think, I take that back. You've already made the motion a second for the discussion on option A one. You didn't add. It's you, just option. I think it's just option A, but okay, we'll just we'll do option, option A. Option A. It was option A. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody that's. Do you remember, Jen? You made the motion. Well, it's well, it's part of the voting process is the discussion. Yeah. 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 Now that the discussion's yeah. over, people need to make a decision. Yes, no. Gotcha. Right. Kind of like what we do with the budget. Correct. Right. Yes. We didn't discuss the. The um, number two, the change orders and stuff. Yeah. Did we, we? we did. That's what. Yeah, that's the, the change orders are the savings. Those are the those are the value engineering savings that we talked about. Yep. I I I mean that again. You have the ability to do that, but if you're going to approve option A, I would rec highly recommend we take change orders two and three. But you have the choice not to do that. <laughs> Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it just makes the most sense. But again, never want to be presumptuous. Okay. All right. All right. Where are you going now? Wait, so we're, we're... <laughs> Who's on first? All right. We're going to vote on option A, which includes one, two, and three. So it includes the value engineering savings that we are, we're agreeing to take. And, and so we, we cannot just do the parking lot and tearing it down because we'd have to go out the rebid. Have to rebid correct? everything. Yes. Unfortunately. Yes. Okay. You are correct. It's, it's an all or nothing. Okay, so roll call vote for option A. Ruth, are you good? Do you, do you do you understand where we're at now? Okay, because if you want to do if you want to do what you're suggesting, you have to reject the bids. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all. Oh, I'm fine. Up. Thank you. So okay. We're voting on option A, or e, yeah, option A, one, two, and three. 
That's one vote. Jen Goldhan. No. Ruth Griffey. Yes. Mary Kemper. Yes. Douglas Knight. Yes. Travis Mathna. Yes. Matthew Nelson. Yes. Corey Trussell. Yes. Michael Wool. Yes. Motion carries. Is there any other business to be brought before the board? We do have to vote. Is there any other business to be brought before the board? Yes, there is. I'd like an update on, on the new guardrail down at the new middle school, please. Yes, the uh, products are in. We're trying to get things scheduled. You should see action out there anytime. Everything is finally here. Uh, oh, it'll be definitely be done before the school. It, it, it better Sorry. be amongst, the, amongst the several other things, but yes. Uh, we just had to wait for all the materials to come. We just got an update on that maybe just a week ago. And so we're getting the uh, schedulers out to do that. So I'm anticipating it'll be done in the next couple of weeks before and, school starts. And another update. The new middle school. Cafeteria, everything is totally done and complete. Uh, tile is done. Woohoo! <laughs> it looks good. Just down. Um, we still have some punch list items around the building. Some painting here. Um, just little things, but they're significant. The flooring is done. The grouting is done. Um, the courtyard should be done in the next couple of weeks. And then that will include the fencing on the outdoors. Um, that should be done. Um, we're working on a roof drain just outside the site, but again, that's small. You guys wouldn't even see that. We know that we're working on it, but the, the most significant things have been addressed, but outside the two things that if you walked and you would see. Um, the, things the things that I also want to the, the, to the to the guardrail. Um, when, um, when you walk you down, down the sidewalk, sidewalk and you and enter you the enter sidewalk, sidewalk right from the main entrance, entrance. Probably, probably down, down within, within 20, twenty yards, yards and stretching, stretching for a stretch, stretch of another of twenty yards. yards. Um, the, uh, the pavement, pavement bubble, bubble, bubble and there's grass coming up through the sidewalk. So they need the sidewalk. So they need to rip that out and redo it. And then there is concrete down along the bus loop. There's Two or three two or different, different sections, sections where the, where the surface, surface has, has, is, chipping is chipping away. away. And, so and so they're going, they're to, be going to be redoing those, those because, because they just they simply just won't stand up over time. So my, not at all. <laughs> my, my ask is I, those things we're being told are going to be done before school starts in that area. And that will also include the guardrail. So we are still holding some money back. Oh, a lot of money. A lot yeah. of money yes, until everything's million, done. Half a million dollars just for the general, the general contract contract. contract. If they don't want. They don't want. We know where. That's correct. Right. <laughs> okay. We have another question. Um, updates on the break in at the old middle school. So the 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 break in at the old middle school. Uh, the last time I we had the insurance company come out take a look at damage. Um, I've talked to the state police and. Um, they have some extremely good leads and they're just in the middle of their active investigation. They kind of asked the district stance. And this is what I told them that um, to the fullest extent possible, we want to hold the people accountable for the damage because it's just simply not something we can have done in our community. Um, there was a lot of damage and we just simply can't stand for that. And so um, I haven't heard an update from them as far as where they are. I know they were going to go out and start to talk to some people, but I do know that they have some really good evidence and they're continuing that investigation. So um, even though the middle school's like empty and got it, it still is a cost. Still damaged because you have to remember the people that bid it were going to expect to recoup anything from inside the building they wanted as part of the demolition. So they'll be taking some piping. They could have taken windows and door frame. All of that stuff was factored in. And now some of that is damaged. So they no longer have that value as part of the bid. So it is damaged, but different. Nothing that we would fix, but they were expecting all of those things to be there. Already, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, we're going to go into executive session. Shane, is there a chance we just can keep turn off the live stream, keep Zoom on, and then make just make sure that board members are yes. here so that yep. we can keep Corey and company. Yep. Can we take a, a two break? minute siesta or fiesta or bathroom break, whatever your choice is. Yeah.